Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. This is another thrift to treasure video where I pick four items and show you how I repurpose them and reimagine. I do these videos every single week, so if this is something you're into, then go ahead and subscribe. So let me start with this one. This was in last week's video, if you remember the sled that I repurposed. Well, one of the comments was asking, they love the sled, but they wanted to know if they could maybe recreate the whole thing out of wood. And I was thinking, I'm, I'm sure you can. So I did keep um, this part to use as a pattern in case I wanted to make more sleds. So I'm gonna, I haven't looked up any ideas yet, but I'm positive I can make some sort of sled using all wood. So that should be interesting. I'm sure it'll turn out adorable. I'm glad I kept this piece and didn't throw it away. So if you're using something as a pattern, even though it's not in the best shape, go ahead and keep it, you know, so you have that pattern. And it is getting to be Christmas time, so I've got to start working on lots of Christmas stuff. Okay, this is gonna be a pretty easy one. I absolutely love these things. It has a hook here, but you can also just hang it by this. I have one of these actually in my foyer. It is just the perfect little accessory to hang. And then you can change out the flowers for every season. But it actually doesn't look bad as is, but it definitely looks mass produced. So we're going to make it cute, make it more my style. And this is going to be a perfect little piece for somebody's house. I'm not... I could go all Christmas with it, but I think I'm going to keep that one year round because like I said, I have one in my foyer and I just change out the flowers. So we'll keep it year round that way they can make it Christmassy by adding Christmas stuff to it. Okay, these were in my haul videos and I'm actually keeping these for myself. I'm going to do something cool with them and I think it'll look good. We'll see. I have an idea. Actually, the idea was brought on by another comment. I just love how y'all are helping me out. Like if you have like a tip, you know, if you feel like you can do something better, like y'all always let me know. And I'm like, light bulb moment. So y'all are helping me out so much. I'm glad I am inspiring y'all, but y'all are also inspiring me. So keep the tips and suggestions coming. I do not mind them at all. I read every single one of y'all comments and I totally appreciate all y'all opinions. Okay. Next, we're going to um, use this wood I have. So these are gonna be amazing, y'all. We're going to use this wood that I got for free. A customer gave me this, and this wood actually, okay, this was super kind of embarrassing, but next door, they, this contractor was doing a bunch of work, and I saw like a whole trailer full of old wood. So I'm like, oh, I could tell they were about to leave with it. So I walked over there, and I'm like, what are y'all doing with all that old wood? And they're like, um, we're bringing it to the dump. And I'm like, can I have it? <laughs> and they just kind of looked at me crazy and like, sure, okay. So they literally just backed the trailer straight up into my driveway and left the trailer there for me to unload and then came pick it up a few days later. But ever since then, the guy has been messaging me pictures every time he has scrap wood on any of his projects to see if I want it. So definitely don't be afraid to ask i'm pretty sure i kind of touched on this on another video but nothing negative has ever come from me telling people what i do most of the time they want to share whatever they have that they think i can use only positive things have come from it so don't feel like you need to keep it a secret that you're reselling the stuff even i've made friends with all the people that put on estate sales and all that they know what I do. They still gonna give me a good deal. They know I'm gonna turn around and sell it for more money. Don't be scared to tell people what y'all do. Okay, so, and I'm excited that I'm gonna be using some of this scrap wood because it's getting a little crazy around here. In here, oh my God, in my workshop right now, I'm not in my workshop, in my outside kitchen, y'all, it's, there's so much stuff. I have so much stuff to sell. It's getting a little claustrophobic, but I'm gonna have a, a big sale soon and uh, move some of this stuff. I was getting ready for that craft show that ended up getting canceled by the hurricane. So it's like a lot going on right now. And then also in my workshop, there's a lot of stuff. So yeah, we gotta get some of that wood taken care of. So I hope y'all enjoy this video and inspires you to go and create your own crafts. To start this project, I need both 
bird cages to be black. So I'm spray painting the white one black using my favorite spray paint, the Rustoleum brand. That is the only brand of spray paint that I use. It really didn't take that long to spray it and it took less than a can of spray paint. Now this project I actually did last year and I'll put the link in the description where I just used Dollar Tree items and it came out amazing, but it gets so hot in my attic around here that they melted, as you can see. I was so upset because these look so, so good. So if this is something you're interested in doing on the cheap, check out that video and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna use some of the pieces from last year. This is a chain just from the Dollar Tree. And I really wanted to upgrade my skeletons, but I didn't buy them when I saw them. And I went, when I went back to Walmart to get them, of course they were gone. So I'm gonna use these little one dimensional um, skeletons that are from the Dollar Tree. They'll serve the purpose. But I was thinking like a skeleton bird, like a big one, or, you know, of course the 3D skeleton will look so, so good. But I live an hour away from the nearest Home Depot, Lowe's, Hobby Lobby, so that wasn't really an option. But I think the thing about living so far from all them stores is it really forces me to be very creative because it's not like I can just run to the store and pick something up. I've always tried to just use stuff that I have because a trip to the store could take up your whole day or half a day or whatever. So yeah, but now we have Amazon, which is amazing. Anyway, back to the project. I attached a chain to the top of the bird cage and then I'm using a bag of rice I'm gonna tie it up and attach it to the chain. And what I'm gonna do is throw this into my gutter and that is how the bird cages will hang. I really like how this looks. I love decorating for Halloween and I actually think a few more of these hanging from my roof would look amazing. Now we're gonna work on the sled. Instead of using one solid piece like I used last time, I decided to use two fence boards since I have a lot of this. This is the material that I use the most. So I'm putting the fence boards together and just tracing out my sled pattern and then I'm gonna cut them out using my jigsaw. It is really easy to cut out um, fence boards with a jigsaw because they are really thin and light. I really like working with fencing. Like I said, it's my favorite wood to work with. And then I'm going to sand the edges, just making sure everything is nice and round. Don't worry if your edges end up like a little bit jagged when you're using the jigsaw because you can sand them down smooth. Okay, and then these are my two pieces at the bottom. I don't know what they're called but I decided to kind of like round off the corners at an angle and we're going to make two of those and that'll be the bottom piece. Now I do want them to, I want the sled to like sit up higher because I liked in the other one how it, it could also be used as a tray. I think that would be cute to have it out on your kitchen counter or something for Christmas and then put some cute kitchen and some Christmas stuff on top of it. So I really want it to also serve as a tray and a sled. So what I'm doing is I use some little spindle pieces and I'm just putting the bottom part together. I want the bottom and the top to be separate because I want to paint the bottom white and I wanna keep the top natural wood. So right now I'm putting together the bottom. Oh, these are, if you don't have this tool, my husband bought it for me, it's amazing. It pulls out nails. So if you get like a wonky nail or whatever, you just take that tool and pull them right out. Next, I wanna drill two holes at the top of the sled. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put string through these holes and that's gonna act like the handle of the sled. So if you wanted to hang it on the wall, it would have, you know, a little handle like sleds do. The last step is going to be to actually attach the bottom to the top of the sled. So what I did was I turned the whole thing over and I used my brad nailer just to put a few nails in there to secure the whole thing together. Now you'll notice I did end up cutting the bottom pieces of the sled because I didn't like that rounded edge. So I just went with a shorter straight edge and I think that looks okay.
This project is gonna be really quick and easy. So I'm using that bacon soda mixture. So I made sure to put the box in this video because in the other one I said baking powder and it's not, it is baking soda. So you mix baking soda with some paint and it gives you this amazing ceramic looking textured paint. Y'all are probably tired of seeing me use this, but I love it and it sells. So everything I've painted with this has sold. It looks so amazing. I love the white textured look. Once it's dry, I'm going to add a crockery stamp. I've been using this stamp a lot. I bought it from Jamie Ray Vintage. I'll put the link below and it's made by the IOD sisters. And I so appreciate all y'all comments and tips on stamping. I'm ordering me some acrylic blocks. I've been watching the IOD sister YouTube video. I am determined to master stamping. So I'll push it down on my ink block and you're gonna put it on your surface and push it down. So I'm just lightly rubbing it. You don't wanna move the stamp. You wanna be very gentle. And then the moment of truth, you pull it up and see what happens. Oh my God, y'all, I was so excited. I think it's the best one yet. It came out so, so good. I love it. All right, final project. This one is a little more involved. That's why I saved it for last. And I realized I went off about the wood and didn't even tell y'all what I'm doing. So we're gonna make some little like tall churches, houses that you can use for Christmas, but also I'm gonna make it where you can use it all year round. So what I did was I want there to be two different levels. So the top, I wanna be smaller and then the bottom will be the size of the wood. So I just measured how tall I want the top to be and I use that piece of wood to draw a straight line and now I'm just using my jigsaw to cut it out. So y'all kind of see what I'm talking about where I have two different levels. Now I want the top part to look like, you know, a rooftop. So I turned my saw to 45 degree angle and I marked a line in the middle. I don't know if you can see it to hopefully get it right the first time. This just makes it easier to get the angles right. If you know where the center is, Ugh, I got it a little bit off. That's okay. I can go back and fix it. There you go. Perfectly 45 degree angle roof. Okay, I thought I videotaped me cutting these things out, but apparently I did not. I must have not been recording. So I want um, a roof at each level. So the top part is going to have two pieces of wood, and then that second level is also gonna have a little rooftop. So I'm gonna attach these to the wood using my brad nailer. And I'm attaching them now. This is totally a personal preference. I'm gonna paint the whole thing white. But if you wanted your rooftops to say natural wood, then you would paint and then attach those after. So this is kind of where you can customize it to yourself. And I had so much fun making these houses because as you'll see later in the video, I made quite a few different ones and they all look different. I really had fun making these because I just felt like I could be creative and do them all a little bit differently. Now I'm gonna paint the churches or the houses, whatever you wanna call them, using my favorite textured paint. I love how it looks on wood. It almost looked like a stucco plaster effect on here. So I could have just painted these white, but I really like the textured look on these and it wasn't any extra work since they had to be painted anyway. And it kind of feels like in all the holes and everything, I really like the texture paint on here. Okay, I wanna make a little wreath to put on here. I'm just using this garland you can get from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a pack. I brought it in my shop, spritz a little white spray paint on it. I just find that gives it that frosted look without having the mess of the frost. And then also these little bows, I think for, are from the Dollar Tree too, but I don't like the gold in the middle. So I'm just using my jute twine. I'm gonna tie it and attach the bow to the wreath. And I'm just gonna use a nail to attach it to the house. 
That way, if the customer wanted to keep this house up year round, all they have to do is remove the wreath and they could put up a wreath that would work year round. The wreath is the only thing making this Christmassy. Once the paint was dry, I took it back out to my shop and I cut out a piece of wood. All I used was a template that I, uh, from an index card to make a little round door and then I'm attaching it with my nail gun. Now I want to distress the edges. Now I did do the texture paint, so you wanna be careful just to hit the edges with your sander and not the middle, cause then it'll take away all that amazing texture that you just created. The last step is to attach the bottom piece so that the house can sit up by itself. I cut something the same width as the house and I'm just gonna attach it using my nail gun. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and please comment below and let me know what was your favorite project I did today. I feel like this video has a clear winner. These houses are amazing. I love them. Thanks for watching and give this video a big